What is up XRP community? Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. I want to talk to you about one of the largest gaming companies in the world, if not the largest, now accepting XRP for in-game purchases. Some wild statements from BlackRock CEO on Fox News yesterday, as well as towards the end of the video, some really relevant XRP Ripple clips from finance conferences. And then also, is Ripple going to have an IPO pretty soon? Well, there's reasons to believe that. Before we get into it, guys, if you need a spot to get XRP or Flare, I recommend Uphold. It's sleek, it's simple, secure. It's where I dollar cost average and get my XRP daily. You can find a link in the video description below. And if you want 41 bucks for free to get some more XRP, sign up with Webull, deposit one penny, and you can get $40 to $300 worth of stocks just for depositing a penny. So if you guys have kids, you probably heard of Roblox. And if you're wondering what happened to my eye, long story short, I got mugged when I was walking around the street at night. So uh, maybe I should carry a firearm next time. But yeah, Roblox, it's like the biggest kids game in the world. And the company that handles their in-game payments, XSOLA, is now accepting XRP as a payment method. Why not Bitcoin? Why not Ethereum? Well, because XRP is way faster, it settles instantly, and it's way cheaper. Okay, 200 million monthly users on Roblox. Um, it's really targeted towards the younger demographic. I doubt any of you play Roblox, but if you have kids or grandkids, probably have heard of Roblox. So what's with the Ripple IPO? This is from Cointelegraph. It says, Ripple job posting hints at a possible IPO, the XRP community says. Ripple released a new job posting on October 16th for a shareholder communications senior manager across multiple locations in and outside the United States. The job posting prompted many of us to speculate on as an IPO coming soon. The job posting outlines that the role will require direct communication with the shareholders, a concept generally associated with publicly traded companies. The chosen candidate would be responsible for developing and implementing communication and relationship management strategies for existing and prospective investors, current shareholders, and financial analysts. And Brad Garlinghouse previously has said Ripple would like to have an IPO in the future. The only time I've ever heard of shareholders in business is typically with a publicly traded company and yeah i think the ipo could definitely be on the horizon and then we have uh, this right here bitcoin and xrp are still attracting inflows from investor funds it says xrp oriented investment products demonstrated remarkable resilience receiving 0.42 million last week marking the 25th consecutive week of positive inflows despite the legal challenges Throughout the year, consistent investor support of XRP is still evident. Even though there's a lawsuit, even though the crypto markets are kind of on the brink right now, there's still a lot of investor money coming in, so that's always good to see. Here's the clip from uh, Fox News. This is Larry Fink, the leader, CEO of the biggest hedge fund in the world. Take a listen. On the rumor, I think the, the rally today is about a flight to quality with all the you know, all the issues around the Israeli war now, um, global terrorism. And I think there's more people running into a fight, the quality, whether that is in treasuries, gold, or crypto, depending on how you think about it. And I believe crypto will play that type of role as a flight to quality. We are hearing from clients around the world. So yesterday they had the fake rumor that the Bitcoin ETF by BlackRock was approved. Bitcoin spiked 8%. And then it came out that that was a rumor. It wasn't even factual. And Bitcoin dumped immediately. People are speculating there was some insider trading going on. But BlackRock CEO is saying it wasn't just about that. It's obvious there's a, an inflow into crypto and the growing adoption and popularity of it. It was bigger than that ETF rumor yesterday. So it's always good to see someone like Larry Fink who runs the hedge fund that manages $10 trillion. There's a reason they call BlackRock the fourth branch of the U.S. government. And he's bullish on crypto. So you love to see that. And guys, if you enjoy this content and you want to give me some positive feedback, hit that like button. It's the best way to support the channel. And it's free. Thank you in advance. Enjoy these clips. Uh, Challenges-wise, uh, I think you know, we've already heard uh, challenges. Are, there are many challenges. Uh, and we are all in the banking space and in the fintech space working collaboratively to solve for these use cases. Um, so for example, I represent Indusind Bank. So we have done a cross-border uh, inward remittance platform tie up with Ripple, which is um, a blockchain platform. 
A couple of large banks are already tied up with us and they're putting in transactions daily through this platform. Um, I'll talk a little bit as we go along, but uh, it clearly has a lot of benefits uh, on the blockchain side. So we are trying to see what other use cases can be added onto that and how it can make our customer experience uh, a lot better. I do think what has happened at GPI is a big step forward. You know, for 40 plus years, we had a, a construct around how cross-border correspondent banking worked. It, it worked, but it had a lot of limitations. We're seeing that move forward, but I think uh, it's a step forward when you're switching from kind of, you know, if I may, horse and buggy to, you know, hey, can, can, we, can we make the horse and buggy go faster? Sure, but if we can actually just move to a Ferrari, let's do that. So you've said before that you think there's a world where Ripple could take over Swift. Well, I've also said I thought there was ways we could work with Swift. Let's talk about that. <laughs> well, stay. <laughs> at one of the uh, traditional exchanges, Bitstamp, I think in 2014 or 2015, there was some kind of freeze function executed or whatever. And how does that work and who decides uh, how that's executed? And just tell us about that. Thank you for that question. That's a great question. I'd love to explain that. So the XRP ledger has a freeze feature for assets other than XRP. So for example, you can represent legal obligations on the XRP ledger and you can trade them. So for example, if Bitstamp owes me one Bitcoin, I can trade that on the XRP ledger to someone else who can redeem it. Bitstamp treats that as a legal obligation. Now, legal obligations can disappear because of things that happen off the ledger. In this case, there was a dispute over the ownership of some of those funds. And Bitstamp made the decision to freeze those funds on the ledger, which is what they should do. If they're not sure whether they owe me a Bitcoin or not, the ledger shouldn't reflect the fact that they owe me a Bitcoin. Now, I just want to add this has no effect on XRP, and you can also create assets that don't reflect legal obligations. But that, that's what makes the decentralized exchange possible. Most digitized or collateralized fiat assets on the ledger are freezable by their issuer. So it's the issuer of that asset that can freeze it. So if you decide to accept dollars backed by, let's say, GitHub, GitHub can freeze those dollars, let's say, if the government like, says that you can't withdraw them. So it's an actual legal obligation tradable on the ledger. Yes, it's strictly the issuer. And XRP isn't issued by anyone, so there's nobody who could freeze it. And, and taking advantage of that crypto um, currency framework, what we are going to do is the same thing that's available in a number of markets around the world. As you know, today, banks, when they fund, they keep Nostro accounts with other institutions. And we estimate there is about 5 to $10 trillion that's stuck of depositors' money that's lying elsewhere around the world with capital risk, depreciation risk, and all the things that go with it. And that's the reason remittances are too expensive. But if you use cryptos to do just-in-time settlement and just-in-time funding, that 5 to $10 trillion come, come, can come back home, reducing the cost for financial institutions, which in turn can make remittances cheaper. Because otherwise, the World Bank goal of bringing down the cost of remittances from 8% from to a below sub-5 number would not be achievable. But with on-demand liquidity, that means using cryptos to fund it between two licensed exchanges is the best way to go. Sure. So we have over 100 banks working with Ripple today around the world. Uh, I think the vast majority of banks, like 99.9% .9 of banks, actually are paying other banks, the kind of the global money center banks like JP Morgan or Citibank, to make those settlements. So a lot of the banks are very excited about democratizing how these global payments flow. There's a belief that, I mean, you could transform the global payment system over time. Although then the alternative argument is you need a centralized, you can't have it decentralized, that it actually benefits from efficiencies. I would assume you come down in the left. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think any time you can do something without that central counterparty, you're going to reduce friction, which is measured by time, cost, speed. So by removing that central counterparty and going direct, direct from point to point, you can skip going from the Bank of David to the Bank of Morgan to the Bank of Mike. You just go directly to the Bank of Mike. So the way we think. All right. So to wrap up, guys, some general things. I covered this in yesterday's video. A clip surfaced from 2014 when Vitalik Buterin was talking about Ethereum and XRP. Take a listen to this one. Really high prices from one of the smartest people and inventors in crypto. That's really what Ethereum is. You know, people talk people talk a lot about things, uh, talk about cryptocurrency 2.0 being like the Internet of Value. We're not, we're not the Internet of Value. Ripple is the Internet of Value. We're not the Internet of Value. Ripple is the Internet of Value. And this is all the way back in the early days of crypto. Uh, Vitalik, he's probably one of the top three most brilliant people in crypto, in my opinion. And then we also have a, a Bloomberg analyst um, saying Ethereum and XRP 
rival dominating institutional interest for real world asset tokenization. We've been seeing a lot of headlines recently about real world asset tokenization. That's like having gold tokenized on a blockchain. So instead of having to haul around all this gold, I could trade it via tokenized and a tokenized asset. Guys, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end of the video and you enjoyed the content, comment blockchain in the comment section below so I know who my loyal supporters are. And hope you guys have a great day. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Until next time.